right. We are beginning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dave Mack. I'm Strategic Executive Officer of Artist Magnet. Uh, I want to first uh, do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, before I begin, I'll say my pronouns are he, him, and his. Uh, and we want to acknowledge that we are here on Tongva land of the indigenous people mm -hmm. in uh, the land that is currently called Los Angeles. Uh, I want to share with you a little bit about Artist Magnet. Um, we are the organization that have brought uh, this session together. And I really thank so much our board chairwoman, Tatiana Williams, for joining <laughs> us and uh, moderating this session with Michael Donovan. And thank you so much, Michael, for uh, taking the time to have this conversation with us. Um, and Artist Magnet was created not only to provide an opportunity for artists um, in the theater world, mm -hmm. not only actors, directors, designers, managers, um, and producers to connect and engage with each other through their professional resumes and their work um, on an online social networking platform, uh, but it was also created to provide professional development, other opportunities and support for emerging artists in Los Angeles theater who have barriers to entry and barriers to access to a lot of mm -hmm. the privileges that come with um, being connected to capital and being connected to wealth in the LA theater. Um, this is of course a conversation that many people are having um, now um, in this current environment. Um, but Artist Magnet has been thinking about this and visioning around how can we support our artists for, for years. And so we're really excited to bring this opportunity as um, one of our efforts um, in that regard to support um, emerging artists in the field. Um, even though we're Los Angeles based, we welcome the artists that are joining from across the country and even internationally to the conversation. Um, and please let us know how we can support your efforts and other services that Artist Magnet can provide. You can check us out at artistmagnet.com. Um, so pretty simple and I'll put the link uh, in the uh, chat box as well. Um, so a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we are going to ask everyone to keep your mics muted um, and to keep your videos off um, for the duration of the conversation. If you do have a question for uh, Tatiana and or Michael, you can put it into the chat box um, and make sure that you select, um, you can have it to be sent to everyone and I will be uh, periodically looking through the chats and um, as time comes for questions, I'll be sharing those with the group um, or you can send it to me, Dave Mack, personally um, and I'll also be keeping that in the queue. Uh, and at the end of our hour, we will have an opportunity where everyone, can, you can turn your videos on if you'd like, and we can take a photo to share on social media. <laughs> um, and, and note, this will be a recorded session, um, and we will uh, be um, sharing that recording as well, um, which we also shared in, in the invitation uh, to this event. Uh, let's see if there's any other housekeeping items. I think that's all my housekeeping items. Um, so if, unless there's anything else that I missed, Tatiana, I'm going to pass mm -hmm. the baton to you. Excellent. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so excited. Michael Donovan is in the house. Woo yes. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> you can tell I'm not excited at all. <laughs> Michael, I'm just not excited. I'm not excited at all. Michael, take us from the beginning. A lot of people know who you are. And for those who do not, you will know who Michael Donovan is. A right. champion, I would really say, for artists. Start I do my off. best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, sure. I started in the business as an actor and a director. I, uh, my degree in uh, college was in, um, I have a double major in uh, theater and uh, English with a minor in music. And uh, so that was kind of an easy transition to go into the performing arts, although my father was absolutely against it. <laughs> um, but eventually realized there was no stopping me. So um, I was in New York for years. Uh, I'm from New York uh, and uh, moved to Los Angeles kind of on a whim to kind of check it out and ended up staying. 
So I uh, started out here as an actor and director, and I got into casting, because you would ask me about this, Tatiana, through my directing. Um, there was, I directed a show in Hollywood, um, a play, and um, there was a casting director in the audience. And she came backstage and she said, I love the direction. Would you be interested in directing casting sessions? I had no idea what she was talking about. <laughs> But you know, when you're an actor and somebody offers you money, you're like, sure, <laughs> yeah. you know? And um, two days later she hires me and I'm like, oh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna wing this one. And uh, that was Beth Holmes. And uh, Beth Holmes is also, she's still a very busy casting director, a lovely lady. Um, and she was the one who gave me my start in casting. So uh, that's kind of how it started. And initially it was sort of like, oh, well, this is kind of fun. And, you know, it'll be kind of something I'll do on the side while I'm still acting and directing and so on. And then it began to be something that became very important to me. Uh, within a short amount of time, Megan Foley, who's also a casting director, asked me to come on as her full-time uh, person. And, um, but with the understanding that I could still do some acting if I wanted to. So I thought, okay, this is good. You know, and I'm, I see myself gradually transitioning, you know, and, um, I remember being on an audition thinking about what was going on in the casting office and I went okay that's it and and so I I decided to stop acting and you know what uh, no regrets uh my years as an actor I think hopefully make me a much better casting director I'm certainly much more empathetic um sympathetic <laughs> um and I hope uh as a result do my best to make sure that you as the actors coming in for me are as comfortable as you possibly can. And it's very important to me that you're treated with complete respect and dignity. That's essential to me. So um, I started casting commercials. Um, and uh, let's see, so I worked with Megan for a long time. I became Megan's partner for a while, then I went out on my own. And so now, uh, and then I transitioned into theatrical casting while I was actually still with Megan. Um, I liked commercial casting, but I found it a little limiting and then I, the non-union thing was already starting, so, and now, of course, you know, it's growing like a weed, so um, I pretty much don't cast commercials so much anymore, but I have cast, I don't know, about 1,200 commercials, something crazy like that, uh, but the, th the focus became theatrical. Um, I was offered a play around that time, and I went, wow, this is my whole background. I could cast plays, really? And boom, I always say it was like a locomotive on a fast track. This career just came at me um, that I just had to get out of the way and let it happen, so... I have now cast over a thousand plays, which is just uh, staggering to me that I've actually done that. I look at the list and I go, wow, it really is that many. Um, and it has been extraordinary. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful experience the whole time. I, I love it. And, you know, casting theater is, <laughs> is probably the uh, least financial rewarding, but the most emotionally rewarding. So, um, so I'm okay with it. I also do cast film and television. I've cast about a dozen series and I don't know, 40 or 50 films, but, but theater is probably what I'm best known for. And so now, uh, I mean, I've cast at the Amundsen, the Mark Taper, uh, Playhouse, Pasadena Playhouse, ICT, uh, the Geffen, uh, Ricardo Montalban, Boston Corps, 24th Street Theater, uh, theaters across the country. It's, it's, it's a lot, national tours, um, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it, it's extremely rewarding. So that's kind of the very condensed version. Does that bring you up? Oh yeah, and I'm very proud that I am the uh, recipient of nine Arios Awards uh, from the Casting Society of America for Outstanding Achievement in Casting. So I've been nominated 33 times, which is pretty cool when I've won Congrats. nine. So, yeah, it's awesome. So that brings us up to speed. I want to take us back a little bit because sure. we do have a lot of actors here. We also have some people who want to transition into casting. Mm -hmm. When was that moment that you knew you wanted to switch over? When it wasn't as rewarding for me anymore. Um, when I was finding that I was getting frustrated by the process more than I was enjoying it. And I think that's a red flag for anybody as an actor. If at some point you get to where it's like, this isn't fun anymore, go do something else. You know, exactly. <laughs> not saying that it shouldn't be something you have to work hard for, but this career is crazy unless you love it. I mean, because there's just, you know, it's not like in a corporation where you start in the mailroom, work your way up to the executive suites. You know, there is no such thing. It's like any one of you could be on a series, you know, in six months. Who knows? You know, um, Broadway in six months. There's, it's, it's just no way to know how it's going to work. And I found myself uh, not enjoying it as much anymore. And so 
And I was really, really enjoying the casting. And I'll tell you what was great about the casting, and it still is the greatest thing about the casting. When I meet an actor that I am excited about, and I bring that actor in to my clients, and they, my clients, then get excited about that actor, and that actor ends up booking it, honest to God, I get as excited as I did when mm -hmm. I booked jobs myself. That's absolutely for real. So, so that's when I just knew it wasn't, it wasn't something I want to do anymore. Can I tell you that I'm completely done with acting for the rest of my life? Who knows? Uh, Who, knows? I, Who knows? It comes back, it comes back in waves. Absolutely. But what I'm hearing, and I think a takeaway for everybody, is be clear on your intention and trust your gut. Here's the other thing I want them to hear. This trust is really important, gut. guys. Not to, trust your gut is in, on every level. As trust your gut because be. because your gut was saying your spidey yeah. senses were saying it's not it. This doesn't right. bring me joy anymore. Thank you. And and the thing about trusting your gut is, I think as an actor, that's probably the biggest lesson you can have. Trust your gut. Your gut will tell you about choices, about you know whether this is an appropriate job for you, whether you know this is the right place for you. So many things it will tell you. But here's the other thing I want you to hear: listen for opportunities. Mm. This is important. There are some things that are going to show up in your life and you're going to go, what, what, what is this? Why is this here? You know, um, don't say yes to things that are obviously inappropriate, you know, ugly, all those things, of course. But when something comes in your life, there may be something amazing behind that door. Don't say no. You know, at least explore uh, because there may be, in my case, a whole career that was behind that door that I never, ever sought. It sought me. So there you go. We have a question about an actor who wants to transition into casting. Can you break down how did that work? Should mm -hmm. they try and go to an internship? Can they do both at the same time? A lot of people usually say it's either all or nothing. You can mm -hmm. only be an actor or be a dancer. You know, um, I work with interns all the time. Um, I, I, I also teach you guys. I teach at UCLA. So a lot of my students uh, come intern with me. And, and I think any chance that you can get to be in a casting situation, you should grab it. Because the first couple of days that I was working in casting, my head was spinning. I was like, why didn't I know this stuff when I was an actor? There were so many things that I took so personally that I took the rejection so hard. I was so hard on myself. And it was like, oh, I was too short. <laughs> You know, I was too, uh, I wasn't good looking enough. I was too good looking. I looked like somebody else. It didn't match. There was no chemistry. I mean, there's so, so many reasons. And once you work in casting, you won't take that rejection personally ever again. You'll be sitting there going, you know what? It shouldn't be me. It shouldn't be that person. That's better for the role. Um, and to understand how it works from a completely objective viewpoint um, is, is so invaluable. And you will also understand You'll never waste a casting director's time again. You will also never be unprepared for a casting director ever again. You'll never be late for a casting director ever again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you will never show up without a picture and resume ever again. Should I go on? Um, so all those things. So I think as far as if you are interested in transitioning into casting, if you can get an internship, that's the great, of course. If you can get a paid internship, that's even better. Um, uh, but they don't always have those, um, but anything you can do where you can just volunteer. Um, some offices like to use readers. Um, if you can be a reader, hey, that's, that's a phenomenal opportunity for you. There have been many times, guys, where the reader got the part. <laughs> because the reader has been reading all day and you watch the client start to look at the reader and go, no, he's pretty good. <laughs> you know? And then all of a sudden the reader ends up with the role. I'm fine with that. And I don't, I don't hire readers as a rule. Once in a while, I do. You uh, answered uh, my question. That was going to be my yeah. next one. People want to know, how do they get to be a reader for you? You know, here's the thing for me, for those of you who have read for me, um, it does give me a chance to still act. <laughs> um, and, uh, but more importantly, it's a shorthand way of my finding out how you work as an actor. It's a shorthand way of my finding out, do you listen? Are you willing to make changes? Are you... Uh, are you paying attention? Are you in the moment? All of those things that we want from you as an actor. So I get it by working with you directly. Um, and then I also kind of have a way of knowing how to keep what I'm doing from pulling focus so that my clients can then have sort of a, a constant to base on uh, and see what the other actors do. And it's really interesting uh, in that process to see some actors will not change. It's like, I was going to do this, and that's what I'm going to do, and I'm trying to help you. I am giving you things that, you know, especially as the session evolves and we get to know 
really where we're headed with, with the character, I'm going to do my best to help you. So listen, really listen, pay attention to what's going on. And by the way, I will also come out to the waiting room in the lobby area and I will say, I'll give you some hints uh, or I'll send my associate Richie out and just, you know, Richie will come out and we will do our best to help you. So you're as prepared as possible when you walk in. So. Talk to me a little bit about the difference between New York and LA and the theater scene. It, it's it's mm -hmm. very different. Um, it's very different. Mm -hmm. It's well, first of all, there's kind of a misconception that there's not a lot of theater in LA. I mean, <laughs> I, right now there's not any theater in LA, <laughs> uh, but uh, I hope that we will survive. And there's actually quite a bit of theater in Los Angeles. Um, it's uh, it's a smaller community, but it's a very vibrant, uh, very active community, um, and uh, I think a very uh, progressive community. Uh, I think very open to. Uh, things that I think others resisted. I mean, all ethnicities, all types, all genders. I mean, all those things are, that's been happening for a while in Los Angeles. And, and I think in many ways you have opportunities here that are, are tougher to get in other areas. I really do. Uh, uh, you kind of brought up a little bit about um, the opportunities that are available here uh, or, yes. or just generally. Um, uh, one of my frustrations um, as a former New York actor who went to open calls, if I have any New York actors on the line here, you we know. We do. There's a handful, handful uh, of these Coast isn't people. Isn't it awesome going to an open call in New York? <laughs> <laughs> hey, New Yorkers. Uh, totally fun. <laughs> totally fun in which you get there at six o'clock in the morning. There's already 150 people on the list. Okay. So here's the thing about Los Angeles, guys. The open calls are poorly attended. In LA. In Los Angeles. In LA. It's shocking. Um, I, among the many things that I do, I do the monthly uh, open call for the Music Center, which is the Amundsen and the, the Mark Taper. Uh, and this is something they don't have to do, by the way. This is something they just do. Um, the last one that we did, there were 27 people. 27 people. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, it's like uh, people think, oh, well, you know, open calls, they're, they don't, they're not they do not really seriously looking. Mm. Okay, that's bullshit. They are seriously looking, okay, number one. Number two, here's your opportunity to be in front of me, not just for what we're doing with the Amundsen and the Mark Taper, but all the other things that I'm doing. I'm not just going to consider you for just the Amundsen and the Taper. I'm going to consider you as an actor. So now, look, I'm not saying go to things that you're wrong for, because that's ridiculous. And this happens all the time, you know, where, you know, uh, somebody shows up for something that they're just ludicrously wrong for. Uh, the white guy who showed up for the fences open call. I'm like, really? Um, um, so, but, um, uh, you know, I think that this is a, a chance for you to be seen. And it's also a chance for you to work. It's a chance for you to try things, you know, a chance for you to try a monologue at something new, just to kind of do it in a professional setting and kind of, you know, see what happens. So, so the open calls are things, that's, that's probably the biggest difference between the two cities is the open call, Tatiana. But uh, from there, it goes into, um, I think it's a little tougher to break into some of the bigger jobs in New York. Mm. The Broadway scene is kind of, there's a lot of, so, so many established people with Broadway credits, they're going to go to that list first. Uh, so, um, but here, I think we're way more open. I think it's a lot easier to get started here than it is in New York, in some ways. As a theater actor. As a theater actor. As, we, uh, yeah. I'm trying to think of whether I agree with that about film and television. Yeah, it was about, <laughs> no, I don't know about that. Obviously there are more though equity houses on the East Coast. And what I found is that there are so many actors including myself, you get work elsewhere outside of LA as an equity actor. Yeah, we do. But the thing is, um, okay, for those of you who are newish to this, um, my advice is always wait as long as you possibly can to get any of your union cards, SAG after equity, whatever. Um, because the, the non-union thing, there's so much work for non-union. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And not only in, uh, in commercials and film and television, in theater too. Um, I've cast, uh, if anybody's been to the Hollywood Bowl, to the big musical they do every summer, I did 10 of those, 11, 11 of those. Um, and the casts are always huge, like 26, 28 people, whatever it is. A certain percentage of each of those casts is non-union, not non-equity, not non sag after non-union. So I need to find really talented non-union people. So I'm very seriously looking 
for non-union people for those. Pasadena Playhouse when they do a huge show, same thing. There's a, a percentage of each of those casts that can be non-union. So we are very, very seriously looking. And here's an opportunity for you as an, um, an actor who doesn't have a whole lot of you know, huge credits to get a major credit, um, you know, so you don't join the union. So what? So now you have that credit on your resume and now you have the experience of working with this, you know, the bowl, a star studded cast. I mean, how, how amazing is that? Um, but um, uh, did I answer that question? I think I got a little off track. What, what was the- A little uh, off track, but yes, yeah, just the difference between New York and LA and theater mm-hmm. actors. Yeah. I think the open call is a good starting point. Yeah, I, I also think, um, a, an LA actor is a little uh, more spread thin than a New York director. What I mean by that is uh, the New York theater actor, I think, is pretty much focused on theater and is trained and is up to speed and yes. is on, where the yes. Los Angeles actor is also expected to know how to do film auditions and television auditions. And, you know, so you're not always, you haven't always taken the most recent singing class or dancing class or, you know, whatever it might be where a New York actor is expected to. They're sharp. Yeah, they're yeah super sharp. On yeah. it and sharp. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. This is a great transition. We have a lot of really wonderful questions coming in. Sure. Talk to me a little bit. Obviously, we are in this pandemic. Mm-hmm. Self-taping for yep. theater. Yeah. Um, I think that what we are finding, I think that theater was the last one to go in that direction. It was. Yeah, but, but we're there. Um, uh, look, the, the thing about it is, uh, I have a lot of thoughts about how self tape should happen. Uh, basically, your background should be neutral. Look what's behind me. There's nothing. Nothing pulls focus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I, I often talk about this. One of my favorite self tapes ever was this uh, guy who was standing in front of a bookcase filled with books, and the um, tape was pretty bad. And <laughs> so I found myself looking at the titles on the books on the shelf. <laughs> and I thought, oh, that's not good. So, um, so don't do things that pull focus uh, from behind you. Uh, think about if, uh, you know, even though it's a theater audition, think about dressing for camera. How would you dress for an on-camera audition? So nothing should pull focus from, from your face in terms of what you're wearing. Choose colors that are good for your skin, your hair, your eyes, which is different for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, make sure you're lit. Uh, you don't need professional lighting, but you need to be lit. We need to be able to see you. We need to be able to hear you. And here's the thing that pisses me off the most. When somebody sends in a self-tape and it's bad or it's got mistakes on it, the self-tape gives you the most amazing opportunity you can do it again. That's right. So why would you send in something that's bad? And, and come on, guys, self-tapes takes, how long really does it take to put a self-tape together? So there's no excuse for a bad self-tape. There's none. And you send in a bad self-tape, you might as well not have sent it in because we're not going to consider it. I mean, because it's like, how unprofessional was that of you to send in something that is really looking bad? So, so uh, you know, think about it. Um, um, uh, I would say think pretty much a headshot is appropriate. Here's the thing, um, if I may, if it's if it's musicals, um, and I did a lot of research on this to ask people what they thought. Uh, the consensus seems to be uh, when you're singing on a self tape, sing directly into camera, and when you're speaking, when you're doing the sides, take them slightly off camera, as though you're reading, you know, you know, with someone. So. That seems to be the consensus. Ask me in three months again, it may change. So, but that's and kind of where we are, you know. So, um, uh, think about color. Look how good Tatiana looks in that lavender. I mean, I'm I'm dead serious. I mean, understanding color is super super important, you guys. I, people do not pay enough attention to color. They really don't. And it's not even that you are consciously responding to it. You're just going, wow, she looks great. Why does she look great? Because she was smart. Because she went and she realized what what, what looks good on her. And that's what you need to do. That's different for everybody. Um, so um, that's great. Else? That's great. Okay. What about self tapes? It's such a big debate. Self tapes in terms of TV and film, as opposed to for stage. We know framing is obviously different. I know there's a big debate. Okay, so I think for stage, I suggested you frame a little looser. Um, mm-hmm. Like the way I am right now is too tight for stage. Let me see if I can do what I think. Yep. About. I think that's a better frame you for stage. Great. Okay. Because we tend to be a little, little bit bigger uh, for what we do for theater. Um, 
And look, guys, we're not stupid. We know it's for theater. So it should have a little more to it than it does for the film and television audition. But if, you know, if you're doing a film and television audition, you're like this, you don't have to be big about it, you know? So think about it. Uh, adjust for whatever you're reading for. That's, that's important. And you need to know the difference. But again, look at it, you know? Look at other people's self-tapes. Look at people's self-tapes and see what you think works and what doesn't work. You know? So very important. And by the way, get somebody to read with you who can act. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. say that one the, again. The person, you're reading, <laughs> uh, the person you're reading with is like, you know, uh, reading with like a, you know, a table. Uh, <laughs> somebody who can at least respond and make it make sense. So. Yes. <laughs> and not somebody who's better than you. That's the other thing. Sometimes we go, ooh, the reader's better than the actor. <laughs> so. They were trying to get the part. <laughs> exactly. They were trying to get the part as the reader. Excellent. And I think that's going to happen in th with theater. I think the, uh, I, I am guessing that the self tape is here to stay. I think that in some ways it does then again for you guys opens up more opportunities. Uh, if we're just getting self tapes, then we can, you know, get a ton of them and zip through them. Um, so I think, I think it's going to be a combination of self-tape, open call, and appointments for the first round. Um, and then I think even in a self-tape situation, your callback will be in person once it is safe for us to do that. Uh, yes. And who knows when it'll be. Unfortunately, we have no idea when that'll be it. So. Great. You spoke a little bit about type. I want to go mm -hmm. back to type. Sure. Uh, the two part question. So let's just chat about type and knowing your type. And then also how do you break your type, especially as a person of color or getting into stereotypes or the reference that you made, you know, the white guy trying to come in for sense for fences. Obviously yes. you have no yes. business coming in trying to do August Wilson play. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. I think very important. Um, particularly, let's start with the newer at first. Uh, but I think you're going to confuse people when you're saying, I'm such a versatile actor, I can do anything. It's like, well, yes. okay, probably not. But um, you probably do certain things better than other things. And you can be more easily cast in some ways than other ways, at least at first. So what I think you need to do is approach this as a business. You are running a business. You have a product that you have to offer to the buyer. I'm the buyer. So what you need to do is know how to market that product. And the way to market it is to know what type you are going to get cast at fairly easily. So now, and then I think once you know, uh, you're starting to book a bit, you know, when you're starting, this is good. I'm people that don't know who I am. People know my, my, my talent. Uh, then I think you start to open it up with the versatility. Um, I, I, I always give this example, um, uh, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt became famous for Thelma and Louise, right? Right? Yeah. The sexy bad boy, right? But if you look at Brad Pitt's pictures from around that time before that, he was a sort of really cute preppy guy, okay? It's just, you know, total prep guy. And he found a type that worked and ran with that for, oh my God, still running with it, yes. you know? But then when he was on Friends, what did he play? A cute preppy boy. And people are like, oh, look, hey, Brad Pitt can play a preppy guy. Oh, come on, right? But my point is, he is a smart business person. He's a terrific actor, but he's also a smart business person. And he built his career knowing what his strengths were. So I think it's important for you to do it. I, I often recommend, like, you know, if you have some friends that you really trust, they do a Zoom meeting, which you go, okay, let's be completely objective. If we didn't know each other, what do you see? What do you see? When you look at Tatiana, because you're all looking at her right now, how old is she? Okay, where is she from? What kind of roles can she play? Is she uh, easy to work with? Is she difficult? Is she smart? Is she, um, is she somebody that you want to know? Is she, are you, like if you were uh, approaching her in a bar, would you be intimidated or would you be like, oh no, I can do this. I mean, you know, there's so many things that would open up to tell us about you. And that, and then you as the actor need to go, oh, that's how I come across, really? You know, and it's like, so you need to know that too. Uh, don't have resting bitch face, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> I, had a, I had a student at UCLA who, uh, I looked at him one day, he goes, yeah, I have resting bitch face. I went, 
Well, I didn't own know it. What was. I didn't own know it. it was. Yeah, but he's like, yeah, I know I have that. And it's like, ironically, he plays that so well. <laughs> it was like, make a lot of money off it. Yeah. Now, specifically though, for BIPOC, how can they break the stereotypes that are placed upon them and yeah. get casting to cast them in other roles? Well, okay, so let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, when I put out uh, most of my auditions, unless it specifically says uh, in the playwright's intentions, like August, August Wilson with Fences, or sure. you know, if I have to have an Asian person, have to have a Caucasian, whatever, I will say all ethnicities, and I'm very serious. And the frustrating thing about that is until very, very recently, when I said all ethnicities, what I got was white people. And it was like, I'm not joking here. I mean, if I can't do all ethnicities, I will say so very specifically. So that's frustrating is that I think that, you know, again, you need to embrace guys that there are some people who are not doing it just to appease, you know, we're serious about, it. we need all ethnicities. So I think when it says it, you should take advantage of it. That's the first thing. The second thing is, um, I just don't have a problem with, if it's, uh, if it, unless it specifically says so, why can't it be anything? And, I, and my work will, as a testament to that, it's just, I don't understand that. And I'm very blessed to work with some extraordinary directors, Jessica Kapsansky, uh, Karen Desai, I mean, Deb Devine, all these people who could care less what color you are. It's not about that, you know? Uh, so we are, I think, at a great time uh, where there is an extraordinary amount of opportunity for a BIPOC, you know, and it, it's like, and, I think certainly overdue in certain situations, absolutely. But um, I think the Los Angeles community maybe in particular is very open, very embracing, insistent upon it, insistent upon offering opportunities for everyone. The gender thing too is really, that's opening up too. So, you know, why does it have to be a man? <laughs> why can't it be a woman? Uh, many years ago, I did this movie where um, I just, I just had this wild idea. It was a written for a man, absolutely written for a man. And his name is Sam. And I brought in this actor, actress. And as she's walking in, they're going, oh no, she's here. But I said, just, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> okay. And they went, got it. And she got it. So, uh, I, I think size is changing too. You know, we don't, uh, ladies, you don't have to be a size two anymore, which is awesome. Right. Um, I just think we're we're opening it up in so many ways. It's a very exciting time. It's a little challenging time, too, because it kind of then it makes it tougher to put into a breakdown situation about, uh, you know, specifics. It, it, it used to be easier to say, you know, Caucasian, six feet to six, four muscular. Well, boom, done. You know, it's like, well, eh, not so much anymore. You're not seeing that so much anymore. So um, and that's probably healthy. So but it does make it tougher. So I think that hopefully uh, you are sitting in waiting rooms once we all get back to sitting in waiting rooms uh, and looking around and it isn't you 10 times in the room, you know, where it is, oh, there's the Asian alternative, there's the African-American alternative, there's the non-gender conforming alternative, you know, and, and so um, uh, it's a very interesting and challenging time. Exciting time. Exciting time. We hope that everybody truly gets on board. I think for a lot of artists, they feel that the emails and the statements that are coming out are great, but they want to see the action behind Absolutely. the words. I, and I, and we I, know that you are putting action behind the words, but yeah, yeah. you know, there's something uh, it, to be said about when you said the open calls, open ethnicities, and yet all white people show up because that's yeah. still the status quo. Yeah. Even though they say open ethnicities, it's still all white people showing up. I had a black actor say to me, well, you have to ask, ask for us directly. I went, uh, well, I'm not going to do that. That's not fair to me. I asked for all ethnicities. So I think it should be all ethnicities. I really do. And I'm very sincere about it. So, and I'm not going to lie to you. If, if, if I know that they don't want that for a certain role, I'm not going to put that in the breakdown. I'm just not. Sometimes mm -hmm. equity requires us to put things that are stupid. I think I was telling Dave this before, when we talked before, that uh, when I did that, that production of Fences, uh, when I put the open call notice out, equity insisted that I put all ethnicities. And I went, <laughs> no. And they went, well, you have to. I'm like, no, <laughs> I won't do it. I'm like, 
this is this is a play, an African American play writer, uh, written about African Americans, about the African American experience. I'm sorry, I as a white man don't know anything about this experience, and neither does any other white person. Right. So it needs to be, right. you know. I mean, so anyway, they finally caved and let me put African American. But that is a great example to show where our industry is at. Yeah. Knowing it's an August Wilson play, and yet they still want you to put all ethnicity. Okay, but the intent was it. It, it was a. It was a backwards thing that they were trying to make sure that everybody was included, you know, so it was trying to be inclusive, but in a way that was completely oh, inappropriate. So, you know, so what do you do if you do a play that's, uh, you know, that's set in Japan? I mean, I mean, you have to kind of go, it should be Asian. So, I, I mean, well, that's without question. Yes. But so it can't always be that everybody's right for everything. And that's kind of what I think, you know, this is where, when the dust settles on all of this, where all the changes that we're going through, I think mm -hmm. it will all work itself out. But I think that uh, uh, people need to understand that too, um, that everybody's not right for everything. Yes, the reality, great. A few more questions, some really great questions Please, coming in. Are you casting any projects during the pandemic? And also, do you cast out of town actors because we have a handful of east coast actors uh yeah i, I cast in new york occasionally um mm -hmm. and uh i've cast for lots of different regional theaters throughout the country uh, mm -hmm. and usually when we cast uh, for those things we're either casting in new york or los angeles uh, and then you go out to whatever the theater is mm -hmm. um in terms of what i am casting during this uh the pandemic i i cast which i think is the first world premiere written for zoom uh, of a play uh, which was very cool. Uh, Murray Mednick is a, a very established playwright. And um, about six, eight months ago, Murray was in the hospital and started writing this play about just being from the perspective of a patient. And when COVID-19 hit, he completely revamped the play and wrote it from the perspective of a patient being in the hospital during COVID-19 um, and then wrote it specifically for Zoom. So we did it, uh, we, the technical challenges were huge. We were the first one and it, there were all kinds of problems, but you know what, we did it. And so um, I, think, I think that may be something that everybody needs to think about for right now. There's lots of readings going on and I'm casting a bunch of those too, but I think there can actually be a production. I think you just need to, uh, uh, San Francisco Shakes or some, a company, a Shakespeare company in San Francisco, I'm hearing is going to do something hmm. online. Not Cal Shakes. I don't think it's Cal Shakes. It's I should Cal know Shakes. what I'm I apologize, I don't, but look for it. There is something <laughs> that they're going to do that is online. So, but I think that there is a way to do it. I think there's a way to be creative in this format um, and still keep theater alive. So uh, I think so. In terms of other well, things, um, I'm also, I'm developing a whole bunch. I'm also producing now, which is fun too. That's the other door that's open for me. And I've got about half a dozen projects in development. And so I will be casting and one of the producers on that, those projects. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. How can people reach you? How can um, your fans reach you and send in a self tape? Do you take self tapes? I, mean, you know, once, I, I don't hide. Um, so once I know that I'm actually doing something, virtually every breakdown that I put is out, uh, every breakdown that I put out is on Actors Access, you guys. So, Great. So there's, there's really no way when people say, oh, I didn't know how to reach you. That's, come on, really? I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, so uh, I'm in breakdown, I'm on uh, Actors Access, I'm on the Equity Hotline if it's an equity job, I'm on Backstage, Playbill, Broadway World. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to miss me. So, um, we'll, you know, we will tell you, but I'm not ready to do those yet. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, right now, you know, it's a, it's a tough time for us, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, financially theater is really, really struggling. Uh, I, I think we will survive. I, I believe we will survive. Um, we will. It's going to take a while. I do have, um, if it happens, you may have read about this, uh, Sleepless in Seattle, the musical, yes. uh, is opening on the West End in London. That's mine. I'm, I'm one of the casting directors on that. Um, they are going to try to open in August. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, why that face? Why that face? You don't have face? You know, my fingers and toes are crossed. <laughs> Sorry, I should never play poker, right? I should never play yeah. poker. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> I mean, listen, if they can pull it off, great. Uh, I'm, I'm, there are a few theater companies open right now in the States, as you know. I know. I know. I, you know, but then you're... Utah and Florida, and I know, I know. I know. Uh, guys, please... 
we'll please, table that. I know. Please stay healthy. Please stay careful. Be careful. Jeez. It's uh, it's the you know Nick Cordero, the Broadway star. I know. Nick was the uh, Rock of Ages is my show, and so, um, you know, to think that Nick was in the show mm -hmm. three months ago, literally three months ago, and uh, if you know the story, he went back to New York to apparently to pack up his stuff, and yeah. I, they think that's where he caught it, and he came back, and he was no symptoms, and he goes into the other room to change a diaper, and she hears him collapse. 40 years old, 40, 41, 41 years old, perfect health, starring in a Broadway, uh, starring in a, in a show, uh, Rock of Ages. I mean, it's like, so be careful, please be careful. Be careful, and, be safe, think, be healthy. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. I have a question, but this one I'm going to read. Okay. Hey, Tim, you sent this in. Hey, hey, as the community becomes more progressive, allowing opportunities equally, regardless of sex, ethnicity, et cetera. <clears throat> do you feel there has been, oops, sorry. Oh, there we go. Do you feel that there has been and will be an evolution on the weight that the consideration for a role being based on height or level of attractiveness? Yeah, that, that's a big one. That really- It is, is a big one. Tim, thank you. That's why I wanted to read it. I didn't want to yeah. miss any of his words. Because, you know, it, it used to be standard to put in a breakdown, beautiful or handsome. That's right. Um, that's right. Uh, awkward, awkward girl with the lump on her cheek, you know? Right? All, uh, of that, all of that. And now, I mean, what's beautiful? Uh, right? It's not so easy to define that anymore. Mm. Um, I think some of those words might go away. Um, I would think- Why? Like, well, because it is such a personal thing. Right. You know? But we it, also need specificity because we if we don't know the awkward girl with the lump on her cheek- Right, right. Then that could just be anybody. I, I think that if it's, if it's crucial to the role, like, you know, mm -hmm. if you're the- uh, obnoxious, stunning cheerleader, you know, girl, and you've got to be, you know, ridiculously gorgeous. And then maybe there's the awkward girl who's, you know, the scientist, and we got to do that ridiculous, usual, nerdy thing. Yeah, yeah okay. Yes. Um, but I think that um, in a lot of roles, it can really change. I mean, if you mm. think about our movie stars, guys, ladies and gentlemen, both, how many are really gorgeous? How many of our movie stars are really gorgeous? Right? Think about it. They're a little unusual looking, a lot of them. Right? You know? So I think we're sort of letting some of that go. I mean, the Chris Hemsworths of the world are kind of the exception almost, aren't they? But I mean, if we need a Chris Hemsworth type, we can say stunningly beautiful man. Okay. All right. Fine. We'll say it. But I think that um, I think that is changing. I really do. And I, and, and I think that is something that, you know, as a casting director, I'm always learning. And part of what this process is that I learn from you guys as much mm. too um, about how certain things that were okay, you know, even five years ago are like ooh, offensive, you know? Um, and, um, you know, what words are appropriate? In an yes. interesting situation, yes. I had a conversation with, uh, this is kind of a, uh, along the same track, um, conversation with a professor who was teaching uh, 80s literature, 80s, 1980s gay literature. And uh, one of his students said, oh, you can't say that. And he said, what do you mean I can't say that? Because you have to say queer. And it's like, okay, in the 1980s, if you called a homosexual a queer, it was offensive. So you need to know that, that it depends, it's context, you know? It's like, so now, you know, uh, uh, we, we keep changing, we keep evolving. And I think that that's, so the language thing I think Tatiana is very important and to understand yes. what is currently appropriate. How's yes. that? That's great. I okay. hope Tim, we answered that question. Uh, Alex would like to, oh, first of all, a big shout out because we have the most amazing people on this call and it is Independent, Independent Shakespeare Company. Oh, it is. Answered great. our question. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Independent Shakespeare Company. Great. The Shika. I hope right. I'm not mispronouncing your name. Thank you very much. You can tell me when you turn on your camera. <laughs> That's excellent. Here we go. Alex wants to know, do you recommend any audition classes? Obviously, we're in a pandemic right now. No one can go anywhere. 
you know, know what I think? Uh, I, I think that there's, I, I am very uh, hesitant about recommending an, any specific teacher because I think it's a very individual, individual decision. Agreed. Uh, there are some people, um, you know, are you the actor who needs to be coddled? Are you the actor who needs to be yelled at? You know, are you, <laughs> you, know, are, are, are you the actor who needs that flame turned under your butt so you actually do anything? Um, or are you the one who's already self-motivating? Um, so wh what I recommend is, I, I, I think auditing is a great idea. I think, first of all, you know, ask everybody you know who they're studying with and get a sense of who, you know, who is respected, who is liked, all those kinds of things, and and then audit if you can. Um, there, but I, I strongly recommend that you study. This is one of the mistakes I made as an actor. You know, I'd gotten my degree, I took a few classes, I'm ready. No, no, that's not how it works. It's a constantly evolving thing. And also, you know, the, the actor that you were at 25 is not the actor you are at 30. Uh, and you, you know, the, all the life experiences you've had, good and bad, um, you need to understand how to bring those to your work. And, and I think being in class teaches you how to do that. Also, the thing about being in class is that, so when you get that major audition, oh. it's less of a big deal. And yes. I'm not trying to say that it's not cool that you're getting this big audition, but it's like, oh yeah, I was in class last night. You know, okay. That's right. You know, your, your instrument is tuned. For those of you who play instruments, if you put your instrument down for three months and you pick it back up, it's like, uh, yeah, I can do this. Uh, where, uh, okay, I got it. You know, well, okay, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, I got it. The audition's over. You understand? That's right. So it's got to be where that instrument is really tuned. And that means during this time, especially where there isn't that much to do, is you got to figure out how to be creative right now. Uh -huh. And I know that's not easy to do, but uh, so get involved with readings. Organize a reading. Even if it's an established play, well, great. So what? Um, you know, like you were talking about, Tatiana, like, uh, so uh, play a role you would never play before in a reading. That's right. Who's that? <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and um, uh, I, I just think it would be creative. Create projects. Uh, find ways to create things for this meeting, like I said. Uh, uh, write. Start writing. This is a very, very stressful, emotional time for most of us. Oh. Um, write it down. Maybe something will come out of that, you know? Uh -huh. Something mm -hmm. that would be uh, profound, mm -hmm. you can share with everybody. Uh, and maybe you, you, know, you write the next big play that happens once we're back, so. I love that, writing, staying involved and keeping your instrument sharp. A lot of people just feel, nailed it, did it. Yeah. But acting is definitely something that we cannot master. You know, I, I, many Growing, years, we evolve. I think it was on some movie that Dustin Hoffman was doing. Mm -hmm. um, this was many years ago, and I read that he'd hired a coach, and I thought, okay. oh my God, Dustin Hoffman is smart enough to know he needs a coach. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> one of the best actors of, of our, in history, you know, is like smart enough to do that. So, and because I mean, you know, Dustin Hoffman, who he is now is not who he was when he did The Graduate. So, you know, learning that you were evolving, that you were changing, and and that's so important too, uh, to let yourself evolve, to let yourself grow, uh, to let yourself get older, wiser, all those things, and um, not desperately hang on to what worked when you know you were younger, because sometimes that is no longer appropriate for you, or has fallen out of style. There's any number of reasons why yes. it doesn't work. So. Or it doesn't serve you. I have a quick shout out here. Hi, Michael. It's Sheila Carls. Haven't Hi. seen you in years since uh, I was in LA doing Wicked. Mm -hmm. Always appreciated your genuine kindness. She wants to know, are you casting anything else overseas? Uh, not at the moment. Um, there are, in the projects that I'm developing, um, uh, one of my producers is British. So there will definitely be probably more West End stuff. Um, but... Uh, you know, nothing's definite right now, you guys. <laughs> I mean, you know, so uh, uh, stay tuned. How's that? Excellent. And where else can people find your workshops if they don't go to UC UCLA? Um, I teach a professional uh, class uh, that uh, is for musical theater. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can go to my website. Uh, it's, what is it? www.michaeldonovancasting.com something <laughs> you'll find it. <laughs> it's on there it's on our email i never look at it so. <laughs> yeah you'll, you'll Ooh, yeah. 
Are you telling right on now, yourself, we're... Michael? <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> I said, are you telling on yourself? <laughs> yeah, like you know, Richie does all that stuff. <laughs> it's wonderful having if you. Just... If you don't know, Richie works with Michael's also his. Richie Paris. Yeah. Yes. Now let's talk about Richie for a second because you asked me going way back. Richie yes. is also a performer. And so that's great. Uh, hand in what hand. we have worked out is, uh, you know, he can still perform and do mm -hmm. this. Uh, so there are casting offices that will be willing to work with you on that. I, I think the thing that you don't want to do is lie. Uh, don't say that you're not an actor because it's going to bite you on the butt. Just be honest, and you know, and and there are a lot of people who will work with you. You know, you take your lunch at yes. nine thirty in the morning. <laughs> you know, because Hustle. whatever you got, whatever you got to do, you 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 figure it out. You cover each other's ships. You do anything. It's like uh, I, I um you know, as somebody who did a lot of hustling when I was an actor, I I really respect the actor who hustles. It's very important. So. Excellent, Dave Mack. How are you doing on time? Do I at least have at least five? I know um, we're cutting it close. We got time for I think for for some closing. For, got a few okay, minutes, and then closing. we're going to do a little Excellent. bit of acknowledgement. Can I bring up one thing real quick too? Please, to, please. To, this is very important to me, guys. Um, it is every audition that I do. Every audition that I do, I have a commitment to bringing in people I do not know. That is every. Woo! Come on. Okay. I might need to do so, a standing ovation for that. Thank you. Uh, how else do I get to know the community? And uh, we are very open to that. So my auditions are a mix of the tried and true, of course, people are gonna look great, people who book with me, people who always get callbacks, people are gonna look great, but there's always a few new newbies and um, I'm excited to meet them. Amen. I want you all to hear that because it's so important. I think so many actors and artists start to feel discouraged and Michael is here to tell you, I'm here to tell you, stay encouraged. Keep Thank hustling, keep fighting, because if you are new to this platform, he will see you. There are other casting directors who will see you. Thank you for saying that, Michael, because I know a lot of people feel like, how am I going to break in? How yeah. is it ever going to happen? It's going to happen. Keep pushing, keep fighting. We do have to close. Christian Gibbs has a question, uh, a question I would like to know as well. Tell me what's one of your greatest lessons along this journey that you are still on? Um... Wow, go with I your know, gut. I'm going deep. Go with, go with your gut. It's, <laughs> it's, it's probably the biggest audition. I, I would say that that is true in almost every aspect of my life. Uh, when Every time I've sort of ignored my gut, I got in trouble. I mean, it's to the point of where, like, if I get to a, yes. a, you know, a corner now and I have a choice to turn left or right, I go, okay, which one am I supposed to do? <laughs> I mean, because I really try to pay attention because if I don't, I get in trouble. So I think as an actor, that will serve you so well to pay mm. attention to you. Your instincts are so spot on. That's what kind of made you an actor in the first place, right? Um, and to, uh, to, to be grateful, that is the other thing, to be grateful for where I am in my life. I'm a very lucky man, I, I know that. Amen. I've had a lot of successes as, an, as, a, as a person. Uh, my work has been honored and that doesn't happen for everybody. So I am very grateful. I have a, I have a happy marriage. I have a, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed and, and I don't take that for granted. So in the days when I get down and depressed, I'm like, ah, shut up. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have, uh, whether it was an audition or a show, most memorable? Oh God, there's so many. I know there's so many. Uh, I was just thinking about, I'm actually painting this room. So it's, if, I'm, if, if I turn it around, it's a disaster the other way, but, um, <laughs> But I, it's a funny story about uh, we were doing a commercial many, many years ago, and the, uh, the spot was the clumsy painter. Okay, so that's the spot. So we set up ladders and paint cans and brushes and all the blah, blah, blah. We put tarps down. All that. Okay, so I find these empty paint cans that uh, are sealed. There's no paint in them. We're good. We're fine. Okay, so, all right, great. So we start doing the audition, and we get to this one guy who's a brilliant physical comedian. He's brilliant. Okay, and he does way more than anybody else does. And of course, the paint cans open and I was lied to and there's paint in the cans and the no. paint goes everywhere. <laughs> I'm talking about <laughs> the walls, the carpet, the ceiling. It's like on the camera, it's on the monitor. We're like, <laughs> it was like, uh, I mean, you know, all we could do was laugh. I mean, it was like, <laughs> What are we going to do? I mean, you know, so obviously we had to shut down the whole session and clean up the room and the, the actor felt terrible. 
it was not his fault, but it is a funny memory. Well, you have a good sense of humor. You hear those horror stories. I don't think most casting directors would be laughing <laughs> about you paint know, flying everywhere. If we're not enjoying it, you know, go sell shoes. I mean, exactly. Do something else. <laughs> it's gotta be, I, I get, listen, I sit there and people sing to me and read to me and, you know, dance in front of me all day long. It's like I'm entertained all day. And it's like, this is, uh, it's an extraordinary thing, you know? So I, I love actors and um, uh, I love working with- uh, And you love what you do and it shows. Yeah. You love what you do. You love what you do. Michael, I cannot thank you enough. Dave thank Mack, you. I'm gonna pass it back to you. This is not the end, everybody. I could talk to Michael for another hour. We might have to bring him back, but you know, Dave Mack is keeping me honest on time. <laughs> Dave, thank you so much. Excellent job, Tatiana. Thank you for that wonderful, yeah, wonderful hosting. And <laughs> thank you, Michael. Yes, Michael, we, I'll see you in a minute. You and I. I know, right? <laughs> have the post, the post action coming up That's in a right. sec, but um. But yes, um, we wanted to take a moment to acknowledge our board of directors mm -hmm. and thank them so much. They um, have helped make Artist Magnet possible and helped make this session possible. As mentioned, Tatiana Williams is um, not only a friend and colleague and uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, an amazing uh, host and co-moderator. He's great, this, by the way. Um, He's great. But, uh, <laughs> but also, yeah, a, a wonderful leader of our board of directors. Um, and, uh, and we have also an advisory board as well. So we thank them um, and acknowledge them. Uh, yes. And we do want, before we break, to let you know, um, you know, wh why don't we do this again, y'all? We're going to keep doing yes. sessions um, like this with other um, guest speakers um, as we continue um, surviving our transformational times and navigating our new world. Um, and Michael, we'd love to have you in the sometime yes. in the future as well. Um, that would that would be awesome. And uh, okay. uh, so yeah, so look out for that again. You can uh, sign on to our e list from the homepage mm -hmm. of artistmagnet.com, and that's how you'll get a notification about future conversations like this.